Hello, good evening, and welcome. You've just entered the arena. I'm Michael Corrin, and what a show we have lined up for you tonight. Hmm. Now, it says a great deal about Canadian pluralism and decency, and about the diversity that still exists in the corners, if not mainstream, of Islam, that a group of Muslim women can come forward and ask a Conservative government minister to, to not limit, but extend the ban on the burqa. Now, those brave activists within the Muslim Canadian Congress do not speak for all Muslims, of course, but then neither do the various extremist Islamic groups in the country. But unlike the MCC, those fanatics pretend otherwise. Now, what these truly, truly liberated women have requested is that the prohibition reach beyond the brief and unique point of swearing citizenship and apply during any interaction between a Muslim woman with the state and the public sector. Now, for this modest and really quite enlightened proposal, they've been intimidated, insulted, threatened, abused, the usual thing. Their suggestions may well be introduced at some point, but, well, this is Canada and not France, and I suspect the change will be incremental and depend on polls, parliamentary majorities, and the influence of Jason Kenney within the government. There are still some politicians who, like their constituents, hide their eyes from reality. There's a lot of confusion over this, this entire issue. The right of a woman, of anyone really, to dress and worship as they wish is pretty much as sacred, forgive the pun, as you're going to find in any liberal democracy. The litmus test is harm done to others. So, for example, a, a religion-based refusal to allow a child a blood transfusion to save life is easily defeated by acceptable standards of protection and state intervention. To generally ban burqas because they diminish female dignity and portray men as uncontrollable beasts of lust is, while intellectually and morally compelling, not difficult to uphold. But a state demanding that those who use or work in its services to comply with certain dress codes is entirely moderate and within a sensible understanding of the extent of individual freedom and the right of state influence. No Canadian should be intimidated or made uncomfortable because the bureaucrat to whom they are speaking is dressed, well, in a tent. And nor should that bureaucrat have to dialogue with someone they cannot see. We also need to stress that this has little to do with religion. The burqa is not Islamic, but tribal, and was almost unheard of in South Asia, the Levant, and other parts of the Islamic world until the, the, the 1970s. In Mecca, in Mecca, the very epicenter of Islam, the burqa is not required, and the theological leaders of Islam in Cairo, about as Vatican-like as, as you're going to get in the Muslim world, have repeatedly rejected the burqa. Now, that's not surprising, as it's more pagan than monotheistic. The full covering of women predates Muhammad and is a desert dress imposed on women in ancient Arabia. So, rather than being the essence of Islam, it's anti-Muslim and probably in need, need of a fatwa or two. Now, as for the current champions of misogyny moaning on about religious freedom, well, spare me your trash talk, comrades. They tend to be leftists and Muslim fundamentalists who have opposed religious liberty for Christians and Jews for decades now. You can't hide your hypocrisy under a veil, you know, even if we can't see your eyes.